Hi. Now, in a previous tutorial, I showed you that if you had two vector equations for lines L1 and L2, say, then those lines were parallel if the direction vectors were in the same ratio. But suppose they're not. What else could happen in respect of these two lines L1 and L2? Well, the best way I can think of showing you this is to think of, say, a road going over a railway line. Let's suppose that the railway line represented one line, and we'll call that line L1. And the road going over the railway line represented another line, let's call it L2. Then, when this happens, the two lines are apart from one another. They don't intersect as they would if you had, say, a crossing like this where the railway crossed a road. We've got line L1 here and line L2 here. Now, in this situation, we call this skew. The two lines are said to be skew. Whereas in this situation, we'd say that they intersect. Now in this video, when you do questions where you're asked to see whether lines are skew or they intersect, I would always encourage you to draw a sketch. And if you did, you might draw two lines like this, L1 and L2. Now you're going to be asked then, if two lines aren't parallel, do they intersect or are they skew? And to do this, what we have got to do essentially is find a value of lambda and mu that makes both of these vectors point to the same position. The same value of r exists in both of them if they're going to intersect for some value of lambda and mu. Now, I've got an example that will work through this idea. So, we'll take a look at that and uh, I'll show you how it's done. Now, if I have two lines, L1 and L2, where we've got their equations here, do the lines intersect? And if so, what are the coordinates of the point of intersection? Well, if we had those two lines, let's just mark them on here, L1 and L2. And if they were to intersect at some point here, then from the origin, there'll be a value then of lambda and mu that would make both of these come to exactly the same value of r, this position vector here, the point of intersection. So, to do a problem like this then, what we say is that if the lines are to intersect, then we can expect this vector for L1 to equal this vector for L2 for some value of lambda and mu. And that's what I've written down here. And to solve a question like this then, this vector equation, what we do is we compare the i j and k components. So, if we start to write down what the i components are when we compare them, it would be 1 plus 5 lambda equals 17 plus 6 mu. So, we just write that in. 1 plus 5 lambda equals 17 plus 6 mu. And if I was to do exactly the same then for the j components, we would get something like this. Let's just put it here. The j components would give us minus 2 plus lambda equals 4 plus 4 mu. And then if we were to do the k components, what do we get for the k components? We end up with 4 minus 3 lambda equals 5 plus 7 mu. Now what I've got to do next 
is solve for lambda or mu. But I've got three equations. So what I do is I look at which two equations out of these three I want to work with to find out what lambda and mu is. And when I've chosen those two equations and when I've worked out what lambda and mu are, I then check it in the remaining equation to check that that equation is consistent with the values that I find for lambda and mu. And if it is consistent, then we have a point of insection. If not, the lines are skew. So looking at these equations, how would I want to solve these simultaneously? Well, I'm lucky because in this equation, I can see that I've just got lambda on its own here. Well, I've got one lambda, shall we say. So if I was to add two to both sides, I can see that therefore lambda would equal six plus four mu. I'm going to call that equation two. I'm going to tidy up this equation here as well. I'm going to take one from both sides and that's going to leave me with five lambda equals 17 minus one, which is 16 plus six mu. And from this equation, I think I'm going to take five from both sides and add three lambda to both sides. So therefore, what I end up with is four minus five, which is minus one, equals three lambda plus seven mu. I'm going to call this equation up here one, and we've got that as two, and this equation here as three. So I'm going to substitute equation two for lambda in terms of mu here into equation one, and then I'll try and work out what mu is. So let's say we sub equation two into equation one. What's that going to give me? Well, it's going to be five times lambda, five times six plus four mu. So we therefore have five multiplied by six plus four mu equals 16 plus six mu. Expanding the bracket, I therefore have 30 plus 20 mu equals 16 plus six mu. And if I take 6 mu from both sides and 30 from both sides, then I end up with 20 mu take away 6 mu, which is 14 mu, equals 16 take away 30, which is minus 14. And dividing both sides by 14 gives me mu equals minus 1. So all I need to do now is just work out then what lambda is going to be. And I could substitute mu equals minus one then into, say, equation two. So if I sub mu equals minus one into equation two then, what do we end up with? Well, we get lambda equals six plus four times minus one. So six minus four, that gives us lambda equals two. Now that I have lambda equals two and mu equals minus one, I need to check to see whether this is consistent now in the equation I didn't use, which is equation three. So I'm going to check this out, check the values out in equation three. And by that, what we do is we'll write down what three lambda plus seven mu comes to, when we substitute these values in. Hopefully it will come to minus one, but I won't write that it equals minus one just in case it doesn't. So what we've got here is three times lambda, which is two, plus seven times mu, which is minus one. And what we have is six minus seven does give us minus one. So we know that it's consistent. It works in equation three. So the conclusion then is therefore the lines do intersect. Now if that value didn't come to minus one, then it doesn't satisfy that equation and we would have drawn the conclusion that the lines were skew. But since they intersect, we now need to work out 
what that point of intersection is going to be. And we have two choices here. We can either substitute lambda equals 2 into the equation for L1 or mu equals minus 1 into this equation. They both should give us exactly the same position vector r. I'll leave it up to you to check that out. But what I'm going to do is substitute, say, lambda equals 2 into equation L1. So let's just write that down here. Sub lambda equals 2 into L1. And what do we get? Well, we end up with r equaling, we've got the point on the line, 1 minus 2, 4. My, uh, we've got 1 then, minus 2, 4. And then we've got plus lambda, lambda being 2, multiplied by the direction vector, 5, 1, minus 3. And if we work that out, we've got 1 plus 10, that's going to be 11, minus 2 plus 2, that's 0, and 4 minus 6, that's going to be minus 2. So the position vector of the point of intersection is 11, 0, minus 2. And quite often in questions, you're asked to find the position vector of the point of intersection, and that would be the answer. But take care if they say find the point of intersection because this is not the point of intersection. But the point of intersection, therefore the point of intersection, has to be the coordinates 11, 0, minus 2. 11 then, 0, minus 2. Okay, well, I hope that's given you some idea then of how you can go about questions like this, whether you've got to find out a point of intersection or check out where the lines are skew. Okay, well, that brings us now to the end of this video. But uh, if you want to see any more videos, do go to my website, uh, www.examsolutions.co.uk, where you can check out all the indexes for all the videos that I have.